Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, on today's video, I want to talk about something that is very simple, very easy. Everybody probably is familiar with, but I was surprised a couple of a while ago. I was talking to a couple of friends, and they never use image planes in Maya, which I thought everybody was using. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to show that and talk a bit about image planes and the way I use them. Normally, what I tend to do, I'm uh, mostly a character modeler, I guess, so I use them a lot for character modeling. But that doesn't mean that it's only useful for that. Obviously, you can use image planes for anything. And I know that a lot of people, what they like to do, and I include myself in that, is taking a model, putting it in a sphere, studying ZBrush with a sphere, and try and you know, make a likeness of someone. And that's all good and fun. But sometimes, because of time constraints, or because you are not able to match exactly to, to your model just by eyeballing it, image planes are like very, very useful. So let me show you that with a couple of examples. Right, normally, okay, let's start just the way I work. I will create a camera, call it whatever. We'll drag and drop it here so I'm seeing through the camera. I'll split this in two views, perspective and a, a camera. Yeah. And for this example, I'm gonna bring just a simple... Uh, where did I put that? I'm gonna bring this as an example. Right. First things first, I think it is way too small. I'm gonna make it bigger. Right. And then I'm gonna through my camera with the one I want to attach my image plane, I'll click on this icon here and I will bring a reference image. In this case, we can try and bring something like this. Right, and notice how that image plane... I'll take these guys here, we're gonna use that after. That image plane stays always in the background when I'm looking through that camera. If I go to my perspective, I can see much ima the image plane in here. And whenever you change the camera, there it goes. It's always aligning to that camera. In case you don't want to do that, you don't want to see that image plane through other cameras, you can just select it and tell it to look, to see it only through the camera. And then it disappears from the rest of the cameras. I normally use that. Otherwise, my viewport gets very cluttered. Right, so when I'm doing that, what I'm trying to match first is just guess the lens that was used for this picture. When I compare it to my camera, I can see that my camera has a lot of like eye fish, uh, fish eye distortion. Sorry, that's the focal length is giving you that. A lower value is going to give you more of a, a fish eye effect. So I'm going to try and maybe use like a 70 mil for that. And then what I normally do, I have that polygons viewport here, I have a little script that I can toggle this on and off. And then yeah, I will try to match that. First thing I will try to match normally is this center line. And then obviously in this case it's not aligned properly. So instead of just rotating the model, which is the wrong thing to do, don't do that. What I need to do is rotate the camera. So for that, I have the rule tool in here. Let me just reset this. I have the rule tool, and through the camera, I can just align it properly and try to guess that the tilt of the head. Maybe this lens needs, yeah, that's a 70, it's an 85. Let's leave it at 70. Right, and once I'm sort of happy with that, I will just take camera, I can duplicate the camera, let me rearrange this. And I will bring bring in another image plane. Maybe something more like this. And I'll try and do the same thing, just...
and get the overall orientation and position of that head towards uh, against the, the background. Something more like this. Right, so now that I have two cameras, I can just check this and this and see how things are aligning. Right, and that, that is going to give me already a base where to start with my model. Uh, something very useful as well, in each viewport icons, you have the, the menus here and this icon here, if I click that, nothing seems to happen. That's the 2D zoom. I think you can access as well through, I don't remember, maybe here. But there is a hotkey for it. <clears throat> I think it's the slash or backslash, I'm not too sure which one this is. But if you hold it down and click and drag, you can middle click and drag or right click and drag, right? And you can just zoom in and out. And then if you tap on the hotkey just once, it just resets back to the original position. So you can toggle. And again, if you hold it, you can just fix this and tweak the camera, the zoom. That's very useful for once you're refining areas. Then something I use a lot as well is, let's let's say that I'm trying to refine this and you will see that as, as you tweak your model and you keep adding more and more cameras, you will need to make slight adjustments to things. And sometimes the camera moves way too much for my little adjustments. So you can always go into the view, camera tools, you can open these and change the values from here. So for example, on the tumble that goes too fast for me. So I can just put a small value 0 0.1, 0 0.05 even. So now that when I tumble it goes very small and I can make adjustments in small increments. Same for the tractal. And then something that, yeah, we said that I use a lot is a roll tool. I can do the same thing, 0 0.1. Right, and once I have something that I'm happy with, I can start just sculpting and changing things and proportions and obviously checking through the different cameras. And just tweak your model as, as, you know, as much as you need. Here's like a, a more advanced version of this. Same deal, same cameras and a couple of other cameras from internet. But a more refined model where things start to line up a lot closer now. And again, obviously, expressions change from, cam from picture to picture because obviously they were taken at different stages in her life, different moments, different cameras, different camera lenses. But it's a very cool way of just Again, check in proportions. Make sure that things are lining up. You see in this case, for example, this thing's a bit off. I could always try and come here. And refine things a bit more. Maybe the camera needs to zoom in a bit more. And now that seems to be off in there and the chin seems to be off as well so it's very very helpful to realize you know a lot of things with your models and what is a, a lifesaver is the hotkey just for toggling on and off the polygons it's something that i used a lot since i don't know since forever i remember working on on some yeah some old projects and uh, we were already doing this excruciatingly matching things and toggling visibility on the viewport and yeah that's a very useful way especially if obviously you don't have scans uh, you don't have access to scans or you don't have access to a lot of reference material you know it's a, a cool way of working and it gets you there most of the time but you're always finding yourself you know tweaking and toggling cameras and, and changing and adjusting things so it takes a while to get used but well it just works wonders for me this is something that you can use as well for non uh, non character sort of assets. You can I can show you another example, a very simple example with a 
very simple geometry, right? But once you sort of align the camera, it's fairly easy to start modeling from a perspective view instead of just using like a front, top and side view. So same deal, I'll, normally I'll put like a camera and a perspective. I'll reset this and this. All right. Actually, you know what? This is not I like to put it a bit lower. Yeah. So now that I have the camera aligned and I have my proxy object, it's a very easy way to start adding details onto it. For example, I can just create a uh, cylinder in here. I'll put like eight subdivisions, oh, yeah, 16. Make these a bit bigger. And I'll try to just very easily, I can just move it around here. Try to get the right size. Right depth, sort of. Oops, what happened there? There you go. And just by checking this camera and the other camera, the viewport, I mean the perspective on the camera, it's very easy to work with, it's very manageable. And yeah, you can get a lot of information from a perspective sort of line up like that. Let's say we want to quickly do that, we can do it as well. Start adding details, right? And everything is lining up perfectly with our camera. So yeah, image planes, I use them all the time. They are super useful. And again, I although I do know that it's very exciting to go into ZBrush and start with a sphere. And start sketching, that's all good and great. But if you ever are in the need of checking with your references, just export this sphere, put it into Maya, and start playing with the image planes and see. Um, how off you are from the from the pictures it's crazy how you think that at least for me in my case a lot of things i think i sort of have it correct and then when i check with my references through image planes it's just crazy how much off i am from the from the thing so yeah i hope this is helpful for you guys uh, please leave a comment down below if you want to know more about image planes or you have other uses for them or any questions you may have uh, Please like and subscribe the channel, obviously, if you like it and, and you're not subscribed. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you.